Hello, everybody, and welcome to NASCAR.com Garage Cam live from Indianapolis, Indiana. The oldest purpose built speedway in America. Welcome to the NASCAR Nationwide, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Garage. We just finished NASCAR Nationwide Series Garage Cam. I'm your host, Matthew Dilder, bringing you an all access tour of the NASCAR Garage. If you're new to the show, hop in the chat room you see to the right of this video. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you want to see today on NASCAR.com. And uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to have a fun show here today. So much history here since 1994 here at the Brickyard. We have been racing NASCAR. Jeff Gordon winning the inaugural race here in 94, one of Indiana's very own, even though he grew up in Vallejo, California, the adopted son in ways. But I'll tell you what, 19, 2000, year 2000, this driver right here, Bobby Labonte, kissed the bricks here in Indiana. The number 47 car of Bobby Labonte. And you see him right here. Bobby Labonte having a little conversation here. Hey, Bobby, how you doing, man? Welcome to Garage Cam Live on NASCAR.com. This place, every time you step in here, in this uh, hollow, hollow grounds, it's got to be pretty special for you, isn't it? It is. The year 2000, man. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about the memories that you still have of, of, that, of that great day. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I mean, I knew on Saturday afternoon that uh, uh, we had a really good race car, and uh, racing Rusty Wallace for the win, I mean, that was uh, unreal, and passing him and kind of bumping a little bit on the front straightaway, and then he nailed the crap out of me in turn one and just gave me a shove and I just I lost him and May car was on the radio saying slow down slow down we're getting too far ahead and I was slowing down but it was just I just it was just at that point in time I was on cruise control and then obviously kissing the bricks with uh, all my guys my wife was here had some hot looking pants on uh, it was, that's what I remember the most and um, it's, it's a great feeling I mean it's uh, this is a historic place anything with age on it uh, they, keep, they keep up to date is, is awesome it's the 20th anniversary of this race. What does that mean for NASCAR? Well, I mean, I, I came up here for the test in the first race, and, uh, not the first test, but the, one of the tests. And uh, just to come to a track where all Indy cars were, you know, I mean, I'm like, holy cow. I mean, this was this is a big deal. Because yeah, uh, we all grew up watching the Indy 500. Exactly. I, I came here, we ran a bush race in... Uh, at uh, IRP at the time, and we took a tour of the took a tour of the uh, the Dern track just because it's like, hey, this is really cool. We're race fans, you know. We're racing over there, but we're race fans over here. So to be able to come here and uh, to be able to practice here the first time and race here every time, it's just it's a really cool feeling. I mean, it's I got here last night kind of late, but it's one of those places you come to. It's different than everywhere else you go. wants to know, uh, this is kind of a strange question. I like the strange questions. I've asked this to a lot of race car drivers, and they all have different answers. But the question is, what is your biggest fear as a race car driver? <laughs> oh. uh, never. It's a good question because he's going, oh. <laughs> it's a big question. That's a great question. I, you know, and I think that, you know, to me, it's, it's uh, you, 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 you never feel like you do good enough. Yep. And, you know, you always want to do better, no matter how good you do. You always feel like even after you win a race, you're like, I think I could have done better. Uh, and that, that's that's something, that, you know, that you just wish that, you know, you're, you, you you judge yourself pretty hard and you take it pretty hard, I think, more than anything else I do. So uh, that's, that's my big experience, not, not doing good enough. Let me let me ask you something, because, hey, I'm still a fan. We're all fans. I saw you had a pretty interesting little off-week uh, excur excursion. Overseas? Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, real quick, because I can tell I can talk all day. But, uh, <laughs> my son was over there uh, doing some uh, work. So I went over there after Loudon, and we stayed in London for a few days and went to Paris and came back uh, for a week. So we got to see a lot of stuff uh, in you London. You know, you're a big cyclist fan. So. Well, I scored some VIP passes on uh, Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning for the tour. So I got to Got over there Saturday, walked around, looked at everything in Paris, and then uh, Sunday afternoon we had dinner. Uh, met some guys there, the USA Cycling Group. Uh, the uh, met a guy from VeloTours.com, I think it is. Uh, hospitality. Had dinner. Got up on uh, 
about 200 feet from the start finish line, watch the whole uh, uh, the finish coming in the Champs Elysees, watch the sprint at the end uh, for the Tour de France for their 100th anniversary. You think about 20 years here, you yeah. know, that's 100 over there. And uh, so we got to see that and just had a great time. I mean, got to see a lot of stuff. And, uh, and, and you did to, just say Jean de Chim what, what did you say? I mean, I'm not. The, the Champs Elysees? Champs you, you know French now. I don't know anything. <laughs> I know nothing. I just had to point at the menu. But uh, what a great time. Uh, in London, it was awesome. Uh, it's just a great, great experience for my son and I. And uh, I had, had, had a lot of fun and uh, enjoyed it. We appreciate all your fans here, too. This Clorox number 47 car that you see right here will hit the track for practice at the Fame de Brickyard. And I'll tell you what, Bobby Labonte, a fan of history of all of sport, uh, going over there to the Tour of to, Tour France, Tour de France, cycling race. W Sox 2005, I believe that's White Sox. Bobby is still a great champion. Bobby Labonte has a lot of fans in the NASCAR world, I'll tell you that. The former series champion, of course, the 2000 Brickyard 400 champion driving the Scotts products car. Lee Cassidy, please tell Bobby to be safe and good luck this weekend. Great question, by the way, brought in. Uh, what's your biggest fear? You hear that a lot out of race car drivers. I remember when I was working for TNN back when they had the, uh, the racing coverage here in NASCAR, back when that net network was still around, and we did a piece called Fear. And we asked drivers what their biggest fear was. Some of them would say some spectacular stuff. But the majority of race car drivers will tell you their fear is the fear of failure. Here's the number 30 car of David Stremme. The widow wax car, I'll tell you what, David Stremme talking about Brownstown and some good old short tracks that he wants to hit this weekend. Was thinking about going over to the Indianapolis Speedrome on Saturday night, an IRP, or Lucas Oil Raceway Park as it's now called. Bobby Labonte. That was awesome having him on there. But hey, check it out. We have the driver of this car, the CSX. I promised a break for trains, Ford. It's David Reagan, the front row motorsports driver, chilling with the crew here at the Brickyard. What's up, man? How is your, uh, how's your morning going, buddy? Yeah, talking a little strategy over with Jay Guy, figuring out what we got to do here. Uh, one practice today. So I really like this schedule. I like coming here for a couple hours today line with our CSX board and then we come back tomorrow for uh, another practice and then qualify so we do all race practice today but um, our CSX board looks good we got the operate for trains uh, playing it safe around railroad tracks on there uh, if you want to be on our car for the Sunday Brickyard 400 you can swing by our hauler and actually sign the hood really? and pledge to play it safe so that hood's going to have a bunch of signatures on it on Sunday morning, and uh, we'll put that uh, we'll put that decal on the hood. So it's uh, it's a fun paint scheme, and we're happy to be in Indy. Let me ask you a question. We were doing nationwide garage cam, kind of talking about the nuances of this track and how the corners may look alike, but they are very different. For the fans watching here on garage cam, hi fans. Uh, can you explain in layman's terms to the fans how technical uh, this course is, and how it's it, you really have to be very technical and di disciplined. Yeah, you know, from a bird's eye view, it appears that all four corners are symmetrical, that everything's identical, but they're far from it. You know, the way you enter the corners are a little different. Uh, the banking's very similar, but you can't miss your marks. If you're, you know, six, eight, ten inches off of where you want your tires to be, you don't have the grip, and that slows your momentum down for the whole track. So if you bobble off of turn two, you pay for it the whole way back around. And so that's why it's so important uh, to hit your marks, focus. Uh, whoever sets on the pole will run a, a perfect lap. Uh, we sat on the pole here a couple of years ago, and uh, that was just the most perfect lap that you could ever run. I don't think that uh, I've ever duplicated it, so maybe we can uh, do it tomorrow for, uh, for Ford and CSX. Hey, you've been in a lot of good victory lanes. How would it be to be in that special victory lane yeah, on the front stretch with your lips planted on those famed bricks? Yeah, that would be a, uh, a picture that you would, would cherish forever. Uh, here at Indianapolis, as, 
a lot of history, not only in open wheel racing, but just motor sports in general from, you know, the F1 cars. Now we've got several divisions of NASCAR here, Grand Dam, uh, you know, they have the, uh, the, the the super bikes here. So just a ton of motor sports, and it would be pretty sweet to, uh, to win. It's cool just to be in a race here and uh, walk around the garage and check everything out, but it's uh, – uh, it's uh, it's got to be a big deal to uh, pull into victory lane here. All right, David Reagan, thanks as always for joining us fun. on NASCAR.com Garage Cam. You see that play it safe number 34 right there with CSX. Hey, you guys can get on that hood. Stop by the garage, sign your name on David Reagan's car, and you can actually take a lap with this number 34 around the famed Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Sloth Fingers, garage is a lot bigger for Cup. Yes, it is. Look at all the space space we love it and we walk in here let's back up and show them these garage stalls okay here's where we are we're on the front stretch of indianapolis motor speedway nationwide cars rocketing down the front stretch at speeds of almost 200 miles per hour right here underneath here the garage stalls. look at how big these garages are giving these teams lots of space to work in it's a beautiful thing we love it and it makes it great for garage cam well, here is Miss Danica Patrick's car, the number 10 car. Obviously, Danica, a lot of friendly faces here that you see in the garage area when you come to almost a homecoming here for Danica Patrick in Indianapolis. So many hugs, so many people greeting her. Of course, somebody that is uh, beloved in this area for her years driving in the IRL Indy Racing League. And you see this number 10 car, this GoDaddy car right here beautiful green number 10 car and uh, I'll tell you what a lot of people point to her as a person that could be a favorite here at Indianapolis she has so much seat time on this track yes of course she only ran here once in, in, in a cup car but uh Danica Patrick really 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 looks like she could uh she could definitely be one to beat here this weekend it's something that she definitely circles on her calendar Here's Danica talking to some folks there. Hey, David Gilliland. Here's your number 38 car. David Reagan's teammate. Getting the belts situated in this number 38 ride here at Indianapolis. What's up, David? You getting comfy in there, buddy? Oh, yeah. We had to, uh, had to get, get some new seat belts, just making sure they're all fit. But uh, Clint, our interior guy, did a good job. They fit perfect. And Making sure the steering wheel's where we want it. Everything's good and good and comfy. So uh, getting ready to go out there and hopefully uh, bust off some fast times. I'm excited about being here, coming to Indy. I was here two weeks ago with my son racing quarter midgets right there where all the motorhomes are parked. Oh, so, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, it was the uh, the last national quarter midget race. So How did he do? He did really well. So he won uh, he, he won one championship, finished second, I think, in the other two out of three. So he, he's doing real good. So uh, we're excited, excited to uh, pursue his racing career. We just got him some late models to run out, some uh, late model stock cars. So um, he's been keeping us busy. But uh, but we're excited to be back here at Indy and, and run our uh, Long John Silver's Ford Fusion today and see what we got. One quick question for you. You're sitting in this race car right now, and you got that view right there. Can you explain to a fan what the view is like coming down the tunnel of a front stretch that we have here with grandstands on both sides? Absolutely. It's uh, it's unlike anything else. Like you said, you got grandstands on both sides. Uh, it, it's like driving through a tunnel, and then you got a dead flat turn one, it feels like, and, and you're looking straight at a wall, you know, a 90-degree turn there. And uh, So it's, uh, it's exciting. It's got your full attention, I'll tell you that, every time you get there. All right, David Gillen, thanks for joining us on NASCAR.com for Hodgkin. Hey, usually we have Harry the, Harry the mic. Well, we got this mic today because it's very loud. These nationwide cars are on the track right now. And I'll tell you what, it gets real loud here, especially with some of these cars running here. There's Casey Mears about to climb into his number 13 Geico Ford. The crew doing final preparations. A.J. Amendinger ran the Indy 500 
in this number 51 car today. A guy that I picked on Fantasy Showdown, Juan Pablo Montoya. Oh man, is it loud. If you didn't watch Juan, pa uh, if you didn't watch Fantasy Showdown, we did it live, we did it, we recorded it at Eldora Speedway. I went out on a limb and said our farmer's insurance plan to perform pick will be Juan Pablo Montoya. Took a little heat from that, but who cares? Here is the number nine car. Check it out. The big sweeper. The big sweeper. It's Bob Decker. The nine car of Marcus Ambrose. Here's the number 11 of Denny Hamlin. The FedEx car. And hey, check it out over here. The number 17 of Ricky Stenhouse about to do an interview with IMS. Let's go outside here. Show you this 17. Let's let, let's listen to it. behind-the-scenes door. Sometimes it gets loud here. Look at this tire guy right here. With the best tire hat of all time. He's got the scrambled eggs on the brim. Oh, my buddy here with the... Oh, look at this. Look at this Goodyear hat. That is amazing right there. Gold star. Gold star for that hat. Paul Menard's car. Paul Menard, of course, two years ago winning this race. Something very special for the Menard family. So much involvement here in Indianapolis. Ryan Newman's car, Smurfs. If you don't like Smurfs, well, something's wrong with you. Smurfs 2 hitting the theater soon, and I'm actually going to go see it. Why not? It's the Smurfs. And there's Ryan Newman. Talking with crew chief Matt Borland. We're using the stick mic. We're using the stick mic today, fans. It's so loud here in Indianapolis, but that's a lot of excitement with that noise. Awesome Denny. You want to see the Penske Bunch, the two, the 22. Please, you say. Hey, guess what? You said please. I like that. Roger Penske, so, so successful. His racing organization here at Indianapolis. Indy 500 wins. A plethora of them, but never, never a Brickyard 400 championship. Can the two or the 22 do it this weekend and bring that trophy home? He got a first last year with Brett Keselowski winning their first Sprint Cup Series championship. Can he get the Brickyard 400 crown? Here's the number 31. Jeff Burton, what a run this team had at New Hampshire. Really putting on a show. Jeff Burton and this whole team with a one heck of a performance up at Loudon. Tigra, can you give a shout out to my husband Ryan going through chemo? He wants to see the number 43 of Eric Amarola. There is the number 43 Eckridge machine of Eric Amarola. Tigger, that's for you. Inductee, Hall of Fame inductee, Maurice Penny on board. Jeff Burton standing right here. What's up, Jeff? How you doing? 20, 20th year. 20th year here at the Brickyard. What a history here, huh? Yeah, this is a... Uh... It's hard to imagine it's been 20 years, but I still remember coming in the gate the first time, having a chance to race here. You know, you never, as a, a guy from Virginia who wanted to race stock cars, never thought you'd race here. It's still really cool to come here. It's such a cool experience. And it's uh, nothing's like that first time being here, but it's still really cool. You got to feel really good, especially after the chance. Well, I feel, you know, the last couple months we've been running well. And, uh, you know, one race, 
That's fun, but it doesn't really tell the tale. You know, we've got to be out of do it a lot of races. Uh, but we've been running better, and I feel like if we just do the little things right, we'll be okay. We don't have to do the big things right now. we got the big things kind of covered up. we got to do the little things right. Thanks for joining us, Jeff Burton, here on Garage Cam, a very loud Garage Cam. Hey, speaking of Brickyard winners, check it out, the number one black Cessna machine. Jamie McMurray, former winner here at the Brickyard. Last year, we asked Jamie, hey, what it like coming back to a place that, you know, he didn't really thoroughly enjoy it as much as he could have, and he wants to do it again so he can experience it again, a career win. This, the Daytona 500, things that you add to your resume, you add these trophies to your mantle, and they make you almost nearly a motorsports legend when you win at a facility like this. Oh, there was a request for... Kurt Busch's car. Eric Brown, please go talk to the 78 of Kurt Busch while he's climbing in his car. So we'll probably just let him do that. But there is Kurt Busch's number 78 Furniture Row Chevrolet. The beautiful flat black machine here. The beauty rest on the side of this. Strapping in here for first Sprint Cup Series practice. Hey, check it out. It's a number 14 car, Smoke. What a busy week he's had. A lot of Tums, probably. W Sox, 2005. You've been in both chat rooms for the Nationwide. Hey, thanks for joining us for two shows there, buddy. A lot of you have been here all morning with us on NASCAR.com, and a lot of you were with us earlier this week, a weekday show, Wednesday night show. We had a Tuesday garage camp, first ever for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. And I'll tell you what, it was a lot of fun playing in the dirt, something that a lot of people were out of their element. OMD here, hosted Garage Cam, loves his dirt track. So we had a lot of fun at one of the most famed dirt tracks in all the country, Eldora Speedway. And what a show that Tony Stewart and his entire staff over there put on here at Eldora. But now the focus shifts. The focus shifts to a place that he's won twice at, a place that means so much to Tony Stewart and that's the hallowed grounds of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Tony once told me he spent many a nights outside his motorhome here in the infield and swears you can hear race cars, you can hear voices. This place has a very, very emotional feel to it, especially for somebody that grew up in the ranks of open wheel USAC racing like Tony Stewart, growing up around the Indy 500 and that realm of racing, but hey, he's getting the chance here in a stock car. He's had the chance in an Indy car before, but this is his chance for a third win at Indianapolis. A lot of people say he can do it. Tony Stewart, smoke, he's got a good chance. The number 55 car, Brian Vickers. Of course, the triumph at New Hampshire, the number 55 team. What an effort by them. Actually, it's Mark Martin in the car this week. That's right, I forgot. Well, Mark Martin's back. We got so excited about V Vickers' win. We forgot about Mark. Mark, we didn't forget about you. Mark Martin, one of the veterans of this sport, beloved in this 55 Aaron's Dream Machine. Let's motor down here because we still got a lot of ground to cover. 1994. What a day it was for Indiana's own, a guy that basically cut his teeth in this region, made a name for himself, nearly a legend, before he even hit the NASCAR ranks. Jeff Gordon. This Pepsi Max number 24 car, the team right now with the computer on top of the car, going through tuning this engine, getting ready for this first practice. He's a four-time winner here at the Brickyard. Can he make it number five this weekend? Tuning the car, the number 24 car here in the pit area. Martin Truex Jr. climbing into his number 56 Toyota. The win this uh, year in Sonoma. We still got a lot of ground to cover. We got about five minutes to go, so we got to kind of we got to kind of hustle here. Casey Kane climbing into his car. The inaugural pole sitter in the Nationwide Series race last year, Casey Kane. He could get around this place pretty fast. You know how technical this place is. You just heard it from David Reagan. Well, that guy had quite a lap in a Nationwide car last year. Can he do it in the cup car this year? Greg Biffle, 
new paint scheme. Love showing you those new paint schemes. Lots of new paint schemes this weekend at the Brickyard. Another new paint scheme. M&M's Prove America. The Candy Ride. Kyle Bush pulling double duty, so he's probably a little still busy over there in the nationwide side. Thank you guys for all joining us on NASCAR.com. Here's a guy that a lot of people are picking for the win this week. It would be one heck of a triumphant win for the manufacturer, Toyota. Never been to victory lane here at the Brickyard. Yeah, this place is a place that's been dominated by the bow tie. Chevrolet, 14 wins out of the 19. Yeah, Toyota really hungry for that win, and some say the best shot at it this year could be this guy right here. Matt Kenseth talking to his crew right now, his crew chief, Mr. Jason Ratcliffe, inside that car. And there is Matt Kenseth and Ratcliffe talking, going over some pre-practice strategy in this number 20 car. All right, we still got a few more stalls to hit, so we're going to boogie. Dale Earnhardt Jr., this big spacious garage, the National Guard. There is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. There's number 88 right there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in there. We also have some requests for... The guy that's pitted to the left of this number 88 car here on garage cam. That is the number 29, and the guy climbing out of the right side is not part of the ride-along program. This is uh, Kevin Harvick's car. This team going over some last-minute things. Gil Martin looking underneath the flap, the left side of that machine, getting them sealed down as much as they can. Harvick strapping into this machine right now. The crew cleaning the windshield, making final preparations. What's up, Gil Martin? Hey, Slothfinger says, I hope Kevin Harvick gets to kiss the bricks on Sunday. Hey, this driver here has done it before. Some say he could do it again. Kevin Harvick putting on the gloves inside that number 29 machine. The crew getting ready to roll this car out. We're going to hear the whistle here momentarily. Carl Edwards, this pass it all forward. Yes, the cars are hitting the track. You see the number two You see Jimmy Johnson's ride. And Clint Boyer. All hitting the track here at Indianapolis. The 99 of Carl Edwards. Dale Earnhardt Jr. We'll show you them rolling out. Here's the number 20 of Matt Kenseth. Look at all the media members, sleeveless and all. Wow, that was quite a shirt. <laughs> IMS, Fox One with Speed Channel. Greg Biffle. Hey, we like to give you the tour. We're cut, hey, the crew right there, the gas cap is still on the number five car of Casey Kane. You see the crew member running there. Remove before flight, sometimes says. There you go. <laughs> Martin Truex Jr.'s Toyota. Here comes Mark Martin's car. Kyle Busch getting strapped into his machine here. We'll show you the cars as they're rolling out here and take you up until the first practice here for the Sprint Cup Series. So many legends have been born here. So many legends have been solidified, like Dale Earnhardt winning the second Brickyard 400. What a beautiful day that was. The 24 car here. Jeff Gordon tied right now in the all-time wins mark. The car you saw roll out second on the grid right now for practice. The number 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson is tied right now with so many greats. This guy right here, Jeff Gordon. Jimmy Johnson. A.J. Foyt. Trying to remember now. Al Unser Sr. and Rick Mears. Yes. <laughs> I got it. Are all tied with four wins here at Indianapolis. 
There's one driver that has five, and that's Michael Schumacher. This guy right here, Jeff Gordon. The guy that we just talked about, Jimmy Johnson. Those are two guys going after what some people would call racing immortality. Five wins at Indianapolis. That would be a very, very exclusive club. I remember when people used to talk about the three-time winners and the four-time winners. Well, now we're talking about five-time winners. Check it out. The cars are rolling out here at the Brickyard. The Brickyard 400. You can catch it live on ESPN. Welcome back, ESPN, to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, part of their schedule this year. You can catch the race at noon Eastern time. David Stremi rolls by. And look at this view, folks. This is a view that you, the race fans, don't get to see unless you get a pit pass or you watch it here on NASCAR.com. You hear the cars now roaring down the front stretch. Speed, Indianapolis, it's what it's all about. And we'll leave you one of the most beautiful sights in all of motorsports. Until next time, from Indianapolis, I'm Matthew Dillner, and we'll see you at the races.